So on February 4th, 2024, the 66th annual Scammies, I mean Grammys, <laughs> took place. A lot of A-list celebrities were there and they popped out on the red carpet. We were graced by Miss Olivia Rodrigo's, who showcased a chic presence on the red carpet in a vintage Versace dress from 1995. On the other hand, we had Miss Taylor Swift, dare I say the star of the show, who flaunted a black and white ensemble, donning a strapless gown from a designer who I don't know how to pronounce the name of, <laughs> with a thigh-high slit, complemented by black opera gloves and some accessories. Meanwhile, there was Beyonce who was dressed as a cowgirl who was trying to hide from the cameras, but we saw you girl. But there was one look that stood out and had a lot of people talking, and that is no other than Miss Doja Cat. She made a bold statement in a sheer corset dress that left little to the imagination. The daring design showcased her curves, including a nipple bearing detail that was designed by the Turkish British fashion designer Dilera Fondoku. And how do we know that? Well, Miss Doja had had the designer's name tatted on her forehead. She complemented the look with vibrant red heels and striking black glasses, creating an interesting ensemble that had a lot of people talking. So one comment read, damn, I miss a Juicy Doja. I don't even know who this is. And Doja has a song called Juicy that she released like four years ago maybe, and she looks completely different. If you see her now versus then, there's quite a difference in the way she presents herself. So I'll show you bits and pieces of the music video and you can see what this user is saying. And another comment read, her glow down needs to be studied. I want to ask you guys a question. Would you classify Doja's new look as a glow down or her decline, or do you just think it's a maybe alternative or more edgy look? Just let me know your thoughts. I'm very curious on what you think about her new look before you finish this video. And I saw this other comment that I thought was funny, so I'm like, I'll just read it to you guys. <laughs> this one says, what happened to her? This is what happens when black women date white dudes, LMFAO. Yeah, because that's exactly what happens when black women date white guys. This guy is spot on. He must be a scholar because the comment that I just read from him was so intellectual. Like, wow. Anyways, those were just a handful of comments that I came across. A lot of them seem to share a similar sentiment, but this disapproval of Doja Cat's outfit for the Grammys 2024 seems to extend beyond her attire. For the last year, ever since she entered her new era for her album Scarlet, there has been a lot of hate directed towards Doja and it's mostly based on her looks and everyone thinks she's demonic and possessed now. The hate surrounding Doja Cat's Grammy look has prompted me to ponder on society's apparent aversion to women or people in general who deviate from the norm. It's an intriguing reflection on how straying away from conventional expectations can lead you to being labeled as ugly or possessed or demonic. <laughs> I thought it would be an interesting video topic to talk about this perception of ugliness surrounding Doja Cat and how it extends beyond Doja Cat. So let's get into this video because we have a lot to talk about and maybe we can answer this question by the end of it. Is Doja Cat becoming ugly or are we just conditioned to one type of beauty? Let's get into it, yeah. Before we get into today's video, I just wanna share a story with you that has still scarred me till this day. When I used to work at Tim Hortons, I came across a lot of weird, rude, and just creepy customers, but nothing could have prepared me for that customer I had that specific day. Before that customer even got in line to order, me and my coworkers could smell something. It was not good, but it was so faint that we didn't even pay any mind to it. We just kept on cleaning the store, but then I turned around and and I saw that a customer was waiting in line. So I went to my till and as soon as I went to my till and called them up to my line, the smell was crazy. The smell was so strong and just so bad that I can't even describe the smell. And if you're watching this video while eating, I don't even want to describe the scent before I ruin your appetite. That's why I have such an obsession with smelling good, which is why I love Scentbird. Scentbird offers a fragrance subscription allowing you to select new designer perfumes every month for just $17. The subscription plans are both affordable and 
flexible, allowing you to skip or cancel at any time. Each month, you have the opportunity to choose any scent you want. And Scentsford has a collection of over 700 perfumes and colognes. And this includes numerous unisex options, and it also includes brands like Versace, Prada, and Gucci. They also feature indie labels such as Heretic, Skylar, and Confessions of Rebel, which guarantees you a diverse selection of perfumes to choose from. With Scentsbird, you receive a 30-day supply of each fragrance, allowing you to sample and experiment with different types of fragrance before committing to a full-size bottle. So the first scent I got is Elixir by Roger. This one has notes of vanilla, amber, and musk, which creates a grown woman smell. So here is the bottle. It comes in a case, and you can actually remove the case so you can actually see which perfume you have. So this is how it looks. This one just smells really good. Then I got Rain by Commodity, and this one just smells so peaceful. This soothing scent is a harmonious blend that combines water musk with the floral symphony featuring lotus blossom, lemon verbena, and jasmine. It's a simple but effective smell, and that's what I like. And the last one I got is Rose Delights by Edenist, and this one is for sure my favorite. It gives you more of a fruity floral experience, and as the scent evolves, a velvety dry down unfolds, blending the vanilla and musk scent into one. It's really good. But experimenting with different fragrances is a perfect way to find out what complements your unique personality and style. So I encourage you to try out Scentsword so you can find out your signature scent. You can use the promo code NK's World to get 55% off your first month at Scentsword. And with this discount, you're only going to be spending a little over $7 for your first month. Scentsword is currently available in the US and Canada. Thank you so much to Scentsword for sponsoring this portion of today's video. And now let's get into the actual video. Yeah. Part 1, Doja Cat's background and early career. I feel like it would make sense to talk about her earlier life a bit to set the tone for this video so we know who we are dealing with. I think it also helps you to see her as human and you're able to form your own opinions about her and her style without resorting to what most people are saying. Because if everyone is saying that she's a possessed demon, you're bound to think she's a possessed demon. So let's talk about Doja Cat real quick. So Doja Cat was born October 21st, 1995 and her real name is Amala Rantina Zandila. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, her name is really long, so I was trying to, I was literally trying to learn how to pronounce it like two seconds ago, but I feel like I'm saying it wrong. I apologize if I'm saying it wrong, but I will link a proper pronunciation in the description box below if you want to check it out. So Doja Cat is a multifaceted American artist known for her prowess as a singer, rapper, and songwriter. She was raised in Los Angeles, California, and I swear everyone is raised there. <laughs> and from a very young age, she started showcasing her musical talents, but it wasn't until 2012 when her career actually started to take off. In 2012, she released her song called So High, and that marked her first permanent upload on SoundCloud. And I won't lie, the song is like catchy, but not like super catchy. Like it's catchy enough where you can like kind of like, you know, get into it. Yeah, <laughs> but it was still a good song and it helped her get her name out there because it actually caught the attention of Dr. Luke. And Dr. Luke is a controversial figure. You may know about him, but like he's not a good person. A lot of people in the industry do not seem to mess with him, but he is an American producer and like he's best known for his work with Kesha, but Kesha has made some accusations against him. I don't want to get into it in this video, but you can definitely just search it up and a quick Google search will go a long way. You'll see everything that he has been accused stuff so yeah nonetheless Doja's song still captured the attention of Dr. Luke which led her to being signed by Kemo Sabi Records RCA Records and signing with the publishing company Prescription Songs when she was just 17 years old and this deal was huge for Doja because it was her first time signing so things were looking good for her and she also signed a temporary artist management partnership with Rock Nation which is founded by Jay-Z himself so it was a huge deal for Doja. Also, if you check out the music video for So High, it gives you like a psychedelic hippie vibes. I feel like Doja was still finding her image, but I feel like this music video showcased her creativity and her different fashion sense, but she didn't yet have the budget that she has now to create the videos that she's making now. So she kind of worked with her budget and like it was still interesting, it was still a good video, but I feel like Doja has always been creative and always been interested in different types of fashion looks. So I don't necessarily know why it's a huge shock that she 
transition to how she looked before to how she looks now but anyways let's just keep going so in august 2014 she released her debut ep called purr and this was her first major musical project and it did pretty well but it really laid the groundwork for what was to come and a little did she know that within the next couple of years she would literally blow up and become one of the biggest musicians ever her journey to stardom really started to gain momentum in 2018 when she released her song called Moo accompanied by a self-directed music video. The music video quickly went viral turning her into an instant internet sensation and if you have not watched the video I suggest watching it because it tells you everything you need to know about Doja. <laughs> like she's a very quirky like just weird person she's an internet troll. She was basically singing and rapping about the fact that she is a cow not a cat because she does not say meow so she is doja cow not doja cat get it right even though the song moo and the music video were very popular i did not meet doja until 2019 and when i say meet i mean like get introduced to her i have not met doja cat yet well yet maybe i'll meet her one day i don't know who knows and i feel like it's safe to say that most of us met doja back in 2019 when she released her album hot pink this is not her debut album her debut album was released back in 2018 and that was called amala and it was a pretty good project too it had good songs like candy tia tamara and juicy that album was good as well but it just didn't make a huge splash like hot pink did hot pink had bangers after bangers and like most of her songs on that album became super popular and viral on tiktok which really helped her get more successful and more famous and really brought her into the mainstream her album hot pink includes a lot of hit singles as i mentioned earlier and it includes say so which is definitely the song that catapulted doja into stardom i think it was a good song and also the timing just really helped doja become who she is right now if you were on tiktok from 2019 to 2020 you definitely know say so because it was everywhere they also had a dance too which really popularized the song even more now that i think about it it was kind of nostalgic like that period in time it was just a nostalgic time when we had renegade you know the renegade dance and the say so dance like those were just so nostalgic now that i'm thinking of it but yeah the dance was really popular everyone was doing it and i did it too i recorded it but tiktok deleted my first account so i have no access to any of my videos so i cannot show you them so thank you tiktok anyways i'll talk about my beef with tiktok in a different video <laughs> But in 2021, Doja Cat continued to make waves, releasing her third studio album called Planet Her. This album showcased her evolution as an artist, featuring a star-studded lineup of collaborations with industry heavyweights such as The Weeknd and Ariana Grande. The album's success further established Doja Cat as a dynamic force in contemporary music. And the whole album is a bop, I am not going to lie. There are so much bangers on that album, like Woman is a good one, Payday, uh, I Don't Do Drugs. There's another one too. I think Need, yeah, Need to Know is a good one as well. Basically the whole album. Oh, and of course, get into it, yeah. <laughs> During this era, Doja Cat maintained a perception of being conventionally pretty and also presenting a musical and visual repertoire that resonated with the public. She delivered infectious and lighthearted tunes characterized by catchy melodies, establishing herself as a commercially successful artist. In addition to her musical skill, Doja embraced a sexually appealing image, projecting confidence and allure. Her signature long hair became a distinctive feature during this period, adding to the overall persona she presented to the public. She was still giving us artistic looks while maintaining her sexual appeal, so like her looks were not really pushing any boundaries but they were still they were still pretty artistic I would say at least in my opinion but they still maintained that prettiness to it. If that makes any sense. This era marked a time of artistic exploration and self-expression for Doja Cat. I don't know if you have watched her music video for Need to Know where she was dressed up as an alien and she had them high ass cheekbones. Like it was still a very creative look but she still maintained her sexual appeal. Like if you look at the outfit she was showing her body yaddy yaddy. She got a nice body so you know I don't blame her, show it off. All of that was still digestible to the mainstream audience. They were still messing with Doja. They thought she was cool. They thought she was pretty and she was creative. Honestly, at first when Say So came out, I didn't think she was all that. I was like, hey, whatever. But then I started seeing her performances of her song Say So. And I was like, wow, you can tell she puts effort into her craft. Like the whole outfit and everything, the outfit was on point. I saw her performance. I think it was, at, it was on Jimmy Kimmel or Jimmy Fallon. When I started to notice that she does pay attention to details and she's really 
really good at her craft. That's when I personally started liking her art and I started really liking her music and everything. But once Doja started gearing up to release her fourth studio album named Scarlet, that's when things started to take a turn. Some people call this her glow down, some people call this her decline or her downfall. So let's talk about it. Part two, Doja Cat's glow down or decline or whatever you want to call it. So up until 2023, Doja Cat was seen as one of the most famous and beloved internet trolls to grace our screens, but that has all been recently changed. Right before she released her leading single for the, her latest album, Scarlet, she was getting into Twitter feuds with fans, getting canceled, and her appearance noticeably started to change. So let's talk about it. In the early months of 2023, Doja Cat began giving giving her fans a glimpse of her upcoming fourth studio album, initially named Hellmouth, but it is named Scarlet. Deviating from her recent musical projects, she hinted that this album would focus on rap. It wouldn't be as bubblegum pop as her recent projects were. In her previous album, Planet Her, she did rap. She also gave us a lot of pop songs like Kiss Me More featuring SZA. That song, I think, won record of the year at the Grammys, but she was basically saying that, nah, I'm not gonna do no bubblegum pop songs anymore this album is gonna be straight rap the album is out now so if you have heard it let me know your thoughts on the album i'm curious but this shift marked a deliberate departure from what she describes as the pink and soft things that had become synonymous with her previous albums which she referred to as cash grabs and digestible pop hits yeah so she literally said that those albums were just cash grabs and she didn't like it <laughs> and i was like dang because i actually like the albums like even if it was just pop hits and just meant to sell records and make money i still liked it but honestly it's probably true because a lot of these music companies they just want to sell records and they want their artists to make music that people are gonna like that's gonna appeal to the mass public so kiss me more woman all those songs they were great because they appealed to the mass public so following this shift in her musical direction doja cat also embraced a darker aesthetic and appearance that she characterized as punk experimental and manic during this era she shaved her head and she shaved her eyebrows a lot of people were like what's going on like is doja okay like is doja like what's going on because every time a celebrity shaves her head people think that they're going through a mental breakdown <laughs> but she later went on instagram live to explain that she shaved her head because i think she just didn't want hair anymore she was tired of hair or she hated her hair something like that she just was over hair so that's why she decided to shave it all off. And this is when we started to see a shift in her appearance and a shift in how the public perceived her. Like it or not, we live in a society that deems long, luscious, beautiful hair as desirable for women. But obviously it depends where you are, like different cultures have different beauty standards, of course. While it is true that women who have short hair are still considered desirable, for the most part, like having long, pretty hair, that makes you considered desirable. Let's just keep it a buck. So Doja's bold choice to go fully bald, challenged conventional beauty standards and brought attention to societal perceptions of women's attractiveness. As soon as she shaved her head, she wasn't completely bashed or considered ugly, but as the year went on and she started to show her different fashion looks, that's when a lot of people started making fun of her and trolling her. A lot of people interpreted her new look as demonic and they started saying that she was possessed, she was a demon, and that she was part of the Illuminati. <laughs> And I swear all of y'all think that everyone is a part of the Illuminati. Honestly, I have beef with y'all because when I was growing up, I was actually scared of Beyonce and Jay-Z because I thought they were part of the Illuminati. Do you guys remember those videos on YouTube that would play a song backwards to reveal the true meaning of the song? <laughs> they would tell you to listen carefully to these songs while they play the song in reverse. And they said if you listened hard enough, you could hear the evil things that the artist was saying. And they did that with Beyonce's song, A Single Lady. So when that song was really popular, a lot of people were saying that she was demonic and she was possessed and they used that song in particular to prove their point. So I remember when I was younger, I would watch Single Ladies reversed and I would like listen to like the evil things that she's saying and it scared me because I thought it was real. <laughs> like I really thought that she was trying to possess me and I was scared. There was one part in the song that Beyonce said bow down to her, I think. I'm gonna play that part. Tell me if you hear bow down. And there's another part in the song that says says people's tears will fall. It doesn't sound evil to me, but apparently it is to them. But anyways, I'm just gonna play those parts. Tell me if you hear it. I'm just curious. I 
I can laugh about it now, but when I was younger, I actually thought it was real and I was scared and I was like, wow, I have to clear my ears from all this demonic music. YouTube was crazy back in the day. Like honestly, when I look back, I'm just like, wow, we've come a long way. Anyways, enough with that Illuminati talk. <laughs> Corny with that mess. So in 2023, Doja Cat released her promotional singles, Attention, Paint the Town Red, and Demons. And all hell broke loose. She was officially labeled as demonic and possessed. We've talked about Doja Cat many times on here. She is now being accused of being possessed by a succubus demon, according to this conspiracy theorist on TikTok. And it's so interesting because I feel like it's a rite of passage for celebrities to be named as demonic at this point. And it's probably one of the most easiest marketing strategies ever. All you have to do is act demonic, you know, post a picture of the devil and people are gonna be like, oh my God, they're demonic. And that literally gives you free promo because we all know how public outrage works. One second they're mad, then after they get over it and they're like, oh, it actually wasn't that bad after all. And I feel like entertainers who are really prominent and stand out in the industry are those who are considered controversial. If they're just considered a good person, I feel like people don't really care enough, but if they have like some controversy attached to them, it helps because there's a lot of controversial figures in the entertainment industry and they're still getting richer. They are not canceled, they are still there. People did not like the music video, Paint the Town Red to be specific. They thought she was praising the devil in that music video, but I actually thought the music video was cool and I thought she gave us cool visuals. And I don't think the devil was even in that video. I'm pretty sure it was just the Grim, the Grim, the Grim, the Grim, the Grim Ripper, Reaper? <laughs> yeah, the Grim Ripper was in the music video. Like, you know, that force of death. You know the Grim Ripper, you know what I'm talking about. Because he was in the video, I guess people thought it was the devil and they were scared. So, uh, but like, I just feel like there's no, like, there's literally no evidence to show that this girl is worshiping the devil. Like, it's literally just art. And the music video actually took inspiration from paintings that Doja Cat created during some Instagram live sessions. The fact that she painted the images featured in the video adds a personal and authentic touch to the visual representation of her music. It's an intriguing insight into Doja Cat's creativity and her ability to bring various artistic elements together in her work but that gets overlooked because everyone thinks she's possessed now so after paint the town red she ran on to release her music video for her song demons and everyone had a field day with that song <laughs> because this time she was dressed up as an actual demon she was painted in black and she had red eyes so yeah that further proved to people that she was demonic and possessed the music video features Doja Cat haunting Christina Ritchie, who plays a character that moves into a new house only to discover it's haunted by a devilish creature, which is none other than Doja Cat herself. And to me, it was a cool video, nothing too crazy. I'm a fan of horror movies, and that's exactly what the music video was. It's no different from scary movies and all that. So I don't know why, because Doja Cat does it, it's demonic. But when these directors and these actors make these movies, they're not demonic. Like, it's literally the same thing. But but simply because she was dressed as a demon and proved people's points, which really makes no sense. Like the song is called Demons. So if she wants to dress up as a demon, I think that makes sense. <laughs> But I actually do appreciate Doja pushing the boundaries and making interesting music videos because a lot of times, a lot of these music videos are just like very similar. Like it's just a very similar concept. So I really do appreciate her making music videos that actually have a different concept than what's presented in the mainstream. But Doja's look in the music video was new to people and people were not feeling it. They were used to seeing Doja look pretty with her long hair and her fit physique. Her previous style showcased artistic outfits that while while they were creative, did not deviate too far from conventional beauty standards. The recent shift in her look, including her shaving her head, presented a departure from the familiar, challenging established norms and prompting a fresh perspective on beauty and artistic expression. And it has everyone mad. And it's not only her music videos that have pissed people off, her Grammy look, as I mentioned earlier, pissed people off. And also if you go on her Instagram, people have just not been liking what she's posting. <laughs> if you go on Doja Cat's Instagram, you're still gonna see pictures that present her as pretty. When I mean pretty, I mean the conventional beauty standards. That's what I mean. 
but you're still gonna see pictures that present her as pretty, but you're also gonna see pictures that don't present her as pretty. And that's really the problem. People don't like that. They don't like how she's presenting herself. They feel like she should go back to her old ways because that's when she was pretty. That's when she was desirable. God forbid you're not desirable to the mass public. Like that's literally a criminal offense. But honestly, it just looks like Doja wanted to switch up her style, which I see nothing wrong with. I'm not a huge fan of the style. Like I'll be honest, it's not my go-to or it's not something that I would wear myself. <laughs> but I can appreciate, you know, art. I can appreciate fashion and I can appreciate someone trying something new so I'm all here for new and just because I wouldn't wear it doesn't mean I need to go in her comment section on Instagram and start praying for her <laughs> part three society hates ugly women at first I thought it was a bold statement but now I don't think it is I really just feel like I'm speaking facts the media plays a significant role in shaping our ideals from advertising to movies and social media we're bombarded with images of what's considered beautiful but why does the concept of ugliness even even exist and how do these judgments impact women let's talk beauty is subjective right but when it comes to societal judgment there's often a harsh line drawn the media from advertising to social platforms plays a significant role in perpetuating these ideals and it's so funny because i swear every time a celebrity debuts a new look that just is not what the public expects they either get called ugly they get dragged or their hairstylist or makeup artist gets dragged <laughs> and that's what happened to beyonce at the 2016 met gala most people seem to not like her look they didn't like the dress and in particular they did not like her makeup and they were dragging her makeup artist for filth People were saying that he didn't blend the eyeshadow well, like he doesn't know what a blending brush is. <laughs> like they're just, honestly, they were just being rude. They had no chill. They were just going in on him. And honestly, it wasn't my favorite look, but maybe that's because I'm used to seeing Beyonce look a certain way or I'm conditioned to a specific type of beauty. And I just feel like people are not used to seeing Beyonce with like such a dark eyeshadow. It kind of gives me um, fashion model vibes like on the runway. So people did not like that. And Beyonce's makeup artist even had to go and defend himself. And he said that they were both going for a graphic look, like a graphic eye look, but people did not care. So one user said, did Beyonce's makeup artist forget all her blending brushes or... <laughs> and another one was just straight to the point. They were like, I want to find Beyonce's makeup artist and slap them. And I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm just laughing how outrageous and like dumb it is to want to slap someone for not doing your favorite artist's makeup to the way you like it. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just funny. And I'll just read one more comment because it was actually kind of funny. <laughs> so this one said, I feel bad for laughing. No, but this one says, who did Beyonce's makeup last night? Had her looking like Swiper the Fox. Hashtag why. But Beyonce is not ugly and I think it's very obvious that she's not. I don't have to say it, but believe it or not, Doja Cat is not ugly either. <gasps> And personally, when I use the word ugly, I use it to describe someone's character and their personality just because I feel like ugly is such a strong and harsh word. And also it's subjective. Just because someone's not attractive to me does not mean that they're ugly in general. But a lot of people feel like just because they find someone unattractive and not desirable, they automatically label them as ugly. Being beautiful and being ugly is completely subjective. Like we all have different opinions. We all grew up with different experiences. So we have a different idea of beauty and how we want someone to look, I guess our future partner, let's say. So just because you don't like Doja Cat's new aesthetic and her new look, does not make her ugly. It's just something that we are not used to, especially since when she first came out, she was giving us all these pretty looks. It was all pink and it was pop girl music. So no one expected her to make a 360 and change her aesthetic to this degree. I feel like people were okay with her weird antics when she first became mainstream because she was still considered attractive. She was still desirable. She had a nice body, a pretty face. So people were cool with that. But now that she has changed her aesthetic, People are not okay with her being weird anymore. They're like, nope, go back to how you were before. You're too weird now. <laughs> But what I'm trying to get at is that the concept of ugliness exists because we already have a concept of beauty. So if you do not fit into that idea of beauty, you are going to be deemed ugly. And that's exactly what's happening to Doja Cat. Just because she's not fulfilling her due diligence by being a pretty lady, she is considered ugly. And I just feel like we should give her the grace to switch it up and give us something new. Because do we really want the same thing over and over and over again? 
no, like I want something new. I want a new concept, you know, some new looks for a new era. And I don't have a major problem with Doja Cat's outfits and her music choices because the quality of her performances are still top notch. She's still delivering good performances. In the end of the day, that's all I care about. I just want her to perform her tail off, which she is still doing with this era. So that's why I'm not pressed. If her performances went down, I would have been like, girl, what's happening? Like, get it together. <laughs> Anyways, I didn't want this section to be too long because I feel like I've talked about pretty privilege a lot. And I feel like this section of the video ties into pretty privilege. But I did see that some of you wanted me to create a video talking about the different types of pretty privilege. So if that's still of interest, let me know. And I guess you guys are not tired of me talking about pretty privilege. <laughs> if you're not tired, then I'm not tired either. And I'll keep talking about it. The public's reaction to Doja Cat's new look makes me we question our own biases and social conditioning. Are we conditioned to only one type of beauty? The comments and criticisms about her often focus on the unfamiliar, indicating a resistance to change. It's crucial to acknowledge the subjective nature of beauty and to allow individuals, especially artists, their freedom to evolve creatively. And before you guys start coming after me and calling her a demon, just listen to the lyrics of her music and watch the actual music videos before you just start blindly agreeing with what everyone else is saying. Anyways, thank you so much for making it till the end of the video. I appreciate you. Let me know your thoughts on this topic. What do you think? Do you agree with what I'm saying? Do you disagree? Let me know. What do you think of Doja Cat's new look? I'm very curious. Just let me know your thoughts because I know a lot of people just think she's crazy and possessed now and they just don't even give her a chance to express herself artistically. Also, let me know what you think about her Grammy outfit. I think I made it pretty clear earlier in this video. I don't know if I did, but personally, I didn't like it. It was definitely not my favorite look from her you know i can see the vision i stalked the fashion designers page and i can see like her style and what she's into so yeah i could see the vision i can respect the vision but i would not wear it hello it's me again thank you once again to scentboard for sponsoring today's video don't forget to use the promo code nk's world to get 55 percent off your first month at scentboard so you're only going to be spending a little over seven dollars but anyways don't forget to subscribe for more content like this if you have any video ideas let me know in the comments down below um, like this video subscribe follow me on instagram but yeah i think that's all for me that's all i have to say today and yeah so i will see you in my next video you better be there or be squared yeah anyways okay i'll see you next week or in two weeks <laughs> bye, 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 bye. like uh, choppy wobby floppy didn't i have to notice you just start to roll it you got to keep your focus why don't you say so